Go. Good morning and welcome to this worship service on Memorial Day Sunday uh, 2020 and we're glad to have you with us wherever you may be uh, whether it's at home or in a hospital room or in a rehab facility uh, we're glad to have you with us today and uh, we look forward to a wonderful time of, of worship uh, as we celebrate Jesus Christ on this day. Later in the service, we'll be using a scripture passage from John, the 17th chapter. If you'd like to go ahead and, and uh, turn there in your Bibles. Shall we pray? Our God, on this Memorial Day Sunday, we pray for those who courageously laid down their lives for the cause of freedom. May the examples of their sacrifice inspire in us the selfless love of your Son, our Lord Jesus Christ. Bless the families of our fallen troops and fill their homes and their lives with your strength and your peace. Bless also each of us as we open our hearts anew to your spirit, as we pray the prayer Jesus taught us to pray, saying, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever. Amen.
Now for our children's time of worship. Today, we're going to be talking about remembering, of course, on Memorial Day weekend, and the way we remember. Some people can tie a string around their finger and help them to remember something that they're supposed to remember. I, I do better with just writing it down on a list and sticking it in my pocket and hoping that I remember to look at my list to tell me what to do. Some people uh, enjoy these little wristbands. Uh, they can put these, uh, they're usually brightly colored, and put these around their wrist and that helps them to remember a special cause or to do something. Uh, this one tells us that Jesus loves us and uh, this one is for a special cause about uh, stronger together. And so uh, th those help us to remember. But on this weekend, there's a special way to remember and that's with the flag. And this flag helps us to remember those who have given everything so that we can be free and we can know the joys of being able to, to worship God the way we please and all the many other freedoms that we have in this country. And every time this weekend especially, every time you see an American flag, thank God for those who've, who've made our freedom possible. Also, on this weekend, we want to remember another symbol, and that is the cross. The cross of Jesus. Jesus gave his life so that we can live forever and ever. These folks gave their lives so that we, we can live in this world in freedom. Jesus gave his life so that we can live forever in God's freedom. So let's remember that, and let's thank God for all the freedoms that we have. Shall we pray? Thank you, God, for your love and your watch care over us, but especially we thank you for those who've made it possible for us to even be in your presence this day in a free way and to be able to, to lift our hearts together in Jesus, in freedom. Thank you for all those families, Father, today who, who are uh, hurting because of the loss of those loved ones. We also thank you for Jesus. In Jesus, we now have freedom, ultimate freedom. And, and we thank you today for that joy that we know in our hearts because of Jesus. For it's in his name that we pray. Amen. Today, we are certainly remembering. And uh, one of the most important words, I think, in the English language is the word remember. Remember who you are. Remember where you came from. Remember what's truly important. This weekend we have the opportunity to focus and to remember. First, to remember our freedom which has been bought at the price of heroes in the past. We also have the opportunity to remember and thank those men and women who have given their lives so that we might be free. From the beginning of our church, over 200 years ago, there have been those who have served our country and, and uh, have fought in all the wars since the Revolutionary War. The freedom we have today to lift our hearts together came at a great price. And today we remember all those, and especially all those veterans and their families across the ages. Further, we want to remember those who have meant so much to this church and who have died in the service to Jesus Christ in this church family since last Memorial Day. I'd like to read those names and remember each one and each family uh, this day. Laura, Elaine, Johnson, Paget, Marion, Mason, Dawson, Barbara, Joe, Odd, Sarah, Carter, Oliver, Clyde, Chesley, Lipscomb, Sr., Margaret, Monday, Chilton, Thornton, Lee, Kennedy, Lorraine, Holland, Smallwood, Johnson, Jeffrey Clay Jeff Robertson, Maxine Odie Mitchell, Norris Edwin Good, and Jerry Paul Turpin. We are thankful to God.
for each one in their service to our Lord. Shall we pray? Father, your word tells us that there is a time and a place for everything. Today is a time of remembering. As we remember those who have given their lives so that we might live in freedom, may we be reminded of your sacrificial love for each of us. And as we remember the love we have known with family and friends, we're reminded of your love, which is unconditional. May we love others in such a way so that we are remembered for your love. And as we remember happy times with hearts full of laughter, may we be reminded of the true joy that can only come from walking with you in Christ. And as we remember the peaceful feeling of being with a parent, a spouse, a special friend, May we be reminded of your peace, which passes all understanding. On this Memorial Sunday, may we remember, and as we remember, may we worship you by remembering your goodness and your mercy toward us. Amen. All of us truly believe that Jesus is the way, the truth, and the life. Then it follows that Jesus is the most fulfilling way in life. God has entrusted us with the calling of bringing this battered and beaten world into right relationship with God. We are called to bring abundant life to those who are cold and uncaring. We're called to be part of building God's kingdom. What an honor and a privilege it is to be called to participate in the reconciling of the world to God. Our scripture today is in John the 17th chapter beginning with the first verse. This is a passage where Jesus is praying for us. Let's look at this passage together. Jesus looked toward heaven and he prayed, Father, the hour has come. Glorify your son, that your son may glorify you. For you granted him an 
authority over all people that he might give eternal life to all those you've given him. Now this is eternal life, that they know you, the only true God and Jesus Christ whom you have sent. I, I have brought you glory on earth by finishing the work that you gave me to do. And now, Father, glorify me in your presence with the glory I had with you before the world began. And here's where he prays for his disciples. I have revealed you to those whom you gave me out of the world. They were yours. You gave them to me and they obeyed your word. Now they know that everything you've given me comes from you. For I gave them the words you gave me and they accepted them. They knew with certainty that I came from you. And they believed that you sent me. I pray for them. I'm not praying for the world, but for those you have given me, for they are yours. All I have is yours, all you have is mine, and glory has come to me through them. I will remain in the world no longer, but they are still in the world, and I am coming to you. Holy Father, protect them by the power of your name the name you gave me, so that they may be one as we are one. While I was with them, <clears throat> I protected them and kept them safe by the name of the power of the essence that you gave me. None has been lost except the one doomed to destruction so that scripture would be fulfilled. I am coming to you now, but I say these things while I am still in the world so that they may have the full measure of my joy within them. I have given them your word and the world has hated them for they are not of this world any more than I am of this world. My prayer is not to take them out of the world, but that you protect them from the evil one. They are not of this world, even as I am not of it. Sanctify them by the truth. Your word is truth. Jesus prays for us in this passage. I know he's praying for his disciples, but we are his disciples. We are his church. Jesus is praying for you and for me in this passage of scripture. He prays that we will be, in verse 11, he prays that we will be united in his work. We're, we're different. All of us are different. We come from different perspectives. We have all sorts of different ways of looking at different things. But we're one in Christ. We know the Lord. We know that he is our Savior. He is our hope, our only hope. And therefore we trust in him. We can have all these differing viewpoints on everything in the world, but we're one in Christ. Interesting fact, there are more Christians in the world today than there were people in the world at the beginning of, of the last century. Isn't that interesting? We're going to be talking more about this in the weeks to come. But today it's very exciting to be part of the body of Christ. There are literally thousands of people coming to know Jesus Christ every single day. Again, it's exciting to be part of the church in these days. Even though it's a strange time and it's an unusual time, where do we get the power to be the church? Anytime, but especially in the midst of a pandemic, and we're actually just in the beginning stages of this pandemic, where do we get the power to be all that Christ has called us to be? Let me give you three of the sources that we have for power in our world right now so that we can be the church or be the people that God has called us to be. First, we get power from the world's need. The world desperately needs Christ. The world needs to know the good news of Jesus. In John the 17th chapter where we've just been reading, Jesus is praying about the word that we have received. He is the word that we have received. And, and he talks about 
the, uh, uh, the name that he has come and, and shared. That's his essence, his spirit, the spirit of God, the Holy Spirit. We've received the word, the living word, and now we have true life in him. You know, every other world religion is focused on somehow earning or achieving our uh, reconciliation with God, somehow getting uh, into God's good graces by earning our way there, working our way to this salvation. Except Christianity, our approach is the approach of Christ. And it's very, very different. In all those other religions, you work and you strive and, and you never ever know if you're really good enough or if you've ever achieved it. You, you just live in darkness with no real hope. And there are so many people all over the world who need to be liberated from these gods, little g, these gods of darkness and these other faiths where there is no hope. They need to be liberated to the God of light. Not their gods of cruelty and, and uh, uh, darkness, but to the God of compassion. Not their gods who demand fear, but the God who gives faith. And in verse 13, the God who truly brings us joy in this life. And you don't have to go halfway around the world to find people who need the Lord. There are people here right in our own community of Bedford who are lonely and heartbroken. People with physical needs, emotional needs, spiritual needs. And as long as we are uh, sharing Christ, as long as we are seeing those people who are in need of Christ, we know what it means. We've experienced Christ and now we see the opportunity to share with them and that gives us power that gives us energy that that stirs our passion and gives us the power to be the church in the world as long as we're loving others in jesus name as long as we are serving others in jesus name there's power for our lives and power for the church second source of power is the fellowship that we have. Christ has blessed this church with a wonderful fellowship. This is one of the most wonderful support groups I have ever encountered in any church. It's a safety net. It's also a, a, a source of recharging our batteries as we talked about last Sunday. Sunday school classes really do look out for the people in their group. Deacons are ministering to church members. All of us seek to care for others in Jesus' name and to build up the fellowship. We are constantly praying for one another. And once you've experienced that kind of fellowship, you want to share it with others because it means so much to you. It empowers you to want to share it with someone else. The love of Christ comes into our lives in the fellowship and then that love has to flow out to others. There's power in that process. And then when other people see that, that spirit of Christ in us, then they're drawn to Christ. We think they're drawn to us, but they're really drawn to that spirit of Christ that's in us, that they desperately need. The fellowship that we find in the body of Christ, even though we're separated, doesn't mean a thing. We're still one. We're still together. We're still praying for one another. We're still reaching out. We're still calling. We're still, still writing notes. We're still caring. It's a fellowship that can't be broken by anything. We're one in Christ. And it draws others to us because they see Christ in us. So first of all, there's power from the, the need that we see in the world. We, we, we want to love others as Christ has loved us. We've experienced that love in Christ and now we're drawn to share that love with others. There's power from the fellowship that we have in the body of Christ, the church. Here's where we've experienced Christ 
in this group of people. And now we want to share that fellowship. There's power in people, in our, the people around us. There's power in our fellowship. But now here comes what I call the superpower. The power of God's Holy Spirit dwelling in each of us. Verse 15, my prayer is not that you take them out of the world, but that you protect them from the evil one. They are not of the world. Even as I am not of the world, sanctify them by the truth. And your word is truth. I like that verse 16, where it says, they are not of this world, even as I am not of this world. There are a lot of times where we don't feel like we're part of this world. We're aliens in this world in which we live. And, and we shouldn't feel like we're part of this world, really, when you get down to it. We're people who are living in a daily walk with Jesus Christ. And we're being empowered to do tasks that, quite frankly, are impossible for others to do. If we're not in Christ, we can't accomplish the things that Christ calls us to do. But we're not of this world because now we are in Christ. I think sometimes we, uh, we sell ourselves short. We think there's no way that we can ever accomplish what it is that God calls us to accomplish. And truly, we don't have those skills. But somehow God supplies those skills. Somehow God empowers us with those skills. And we end up doing things that we never dreamed that we could possibly do. It's God's power. It's God's Holy Spirit at work in our lives. You know, he's told us he's, he's never gonna leave us, he's never gonna forsake us. In fact, if you remember his promise, he said, lo, I am with you always, even unto the end of the age, the end of the world. He's talking about his Holy Spirit here. The Holy Spirit is going to give us power to do things that only God can do, but he's gonna do them through you and me. That's that literal superhuman power that comes to each of us in the Holy Spirit so that we can overcome weaknesses that we have and we can accomplish tasks that are given to us. I'm going to be talking a lot more about the Holy Spirit in weeks to come, especially next week. We'll get into Pentecost and, and we'll be talking about the power of the Holy Spirit there. But I just wanted to touch on that today as one of the, the powers that we have as the church the ways that we have to do the will of God. So where does the church get its power first? From the need around us. We have the heart of Christ, and that's going to empower us when we see the need. The power is going to be there. We have power from the fellowship that we experience. We experience God. We experience the love of Christ here in this fellowship. And that empowers us to want to share that with more. And then we receive power from God's Holy Spirit. Jesus prayed for you. Prayed for me. He prayed for his church. And that prayer has been answered in great and marvelous ways. Even though the church today is certainly not all that God means for it to be, intended for it to be, we're expanding our horizons by the hour, it seems in new and, and interesting ways that God is calling us to minister to this world. But we're still meeting the needs of the world around us. We're still accomplishing things that are not humanly possible on our own. And God is still with us. God has not left us. God has not forsaken us. And God's Holy Spirit is at work in your life right now. Shall we pray? Now as we go into this new week, may we know that we are loved perfectly, saved eternally, and empowered by the Holy Spirit as a disciple of Jesus Christ. Amen. Thank you.